high fashion versus ghetto. Cornrows, hairstyles that originate in Africa that expressed identity from religion to status, age, kinship, and more. Cornrows, hairstyles that were used to plan escapes from plantations during slavery. These hairstyles laid out plantations and escape routes. These were methods that limited the fear of the enslaved masters finding out. Now, the first time in which cornrows were popularized by a non-black person was by Bo Derrick, a white actress who starred in a movie called Ten. This 1979 film became popular among the masses and in the media because of Bo Derrick's iconic cornrows that she sported. Instantly, magazines began to call the braids Bo Braids. She was highly accepted and it was seen as beautiful. Kim Kardashian, one of the biggest social media personalities in the world, in several social media posts, culturally appropriated and contributed to this popularization of cornrows herself, calling them Bo Derek braids, accumulating to millions of views and likes, equating to profit. Now, cultural appropriation, according to Google Dictionary, is the unacknowledged or inappropriate adoption of the customs, practices, ideas of one people or society by members of another and typically more dominant people or society. AKA, in this situation, giving credit to a white woman for a black hairstyle. This is how the cultural meaning is demeaned and how the phrase is just a hairstyle comes into play. Now, let's flip the script though. Renee Rogers, a black woman who worked for American Airlines. She wore her hair in cornrow styles to work, but her employer demanded that she not wear her hair in the cornrow style based on their grooming policy. Instantly, Renee Rogers filed a lawsuit in 1981, which became known as Rogers versus American Airlines. Her legal argument was that her hair was a part of her cultural heritage. But the judge ruled against Renee Rogers because he said that she got her hair done soon after the movie 10, starring Bo Derrick. So why is it that when black people, when we embrace our own culture, that we get punished? Why is it that white people are able to make a profit off our culture and get praised? You see, this is just one way white America profits off black America. Not to mention AAVE, African American Vernacular English, also known as the black scent. Black hair, genres of music developed and influenced by black artists, and so on. The dominant race is profiting off of us while we're getting chastised. So, if cultural appropriation is everywhere, and people appropriate all the time, what is the big deal? That answer is power. The time when credit is due, it ends up in the hands of someone who is white, or at least not black. A line from an article, when is cultural appropriation appropriate? When culture is embraced, and it's people discarded. It's easy to trick the country into thinking that somebody white started it all. As writer Taryn Finley put it, it is more than just hair, just culture, just slang. It is the heart of the black community. You see, what gives you praise just costs a black American an opportunity. An Alabama woman by the name of Chastity Jones was given a job offer as a customer service representative in Mobile in 2010. She wore her hair in natural dreadlocks in which an HR manager told her violated the grooming policy because they tend to get messy. The HR manager told her that she could not wear her hair at work this way. So 
Jones refused to cut her locks, and therefore the job offer was taken back. Now, many are fascinated with features such as fuller lips or larger bottoms, often begging cosmetics to create such features. It is important to note that these features are not typically related to white women. These features on black women, though, have caused them abuse and exploitation. In the late 1700s and early 1800s, an African slave by the name of Sarah Bartman was paraded around Europe as a freak show attraction because of her large buttocks. While darker skin had a huge impact on the way black women were treated, physique and anatomy further characterized them as inferior beings. Now, why are we deemed inferior beings because of our features, or ghetto because of our own culture? This is hypocrisy. You see, nowadays, that's all people want, fuller features, in which many black women were and still are bashed for. Think about it the next time you wear black hairstyles and receive compliments or thousands of likes because of it. Think about it the next time you're called cool while using AAVE or the black scent. Think about it the next time you wear black fashion and turn it into a fashion style that you created and you receive profit from it. The bottom line is take the time to learn the cultural significance behind black culture. Think about it before you take aspects of it before you chastise that black American for their own culture. Take the time to teach others about this history as well. You see, the struggle and the suffrage behind black culture is often disregarded when one appropriates and profits off of it. People need to be immediately called out when they appropriate black culture. Now, of course, one of the many ways the world works is through embracing other cultures. But the problem here is the disregard for the recognition of where it comes from and the hypocrisy people and institutions in America have towards black Americans who will then turn around and use that same aspect of black culture and find it acceptable in white people. I believe this lack of knowledge lies in the lack of cultural diversity. You see, students, teachers, and faculty need to demand that African-American study courses and black history be taught in each grade. And not just the repeated teaching of slavery, the civil rights movement, but rather the symbolism behind our hair, the effect of microaggressions, the creativity, the beauty, the power in our culture. For example, the many black inventors who invented many inventions that have created and shaped society today. We have Sarah Boone, who created the ironing board. Marie Van Britten Brown, who created the home security system. And Osborne Dorsey, who created the doorknob and the doorstop. These are things that are not commonly taught in schools. My point being, who's going to teach you this? The often only time black students see themselves in curriculum is when slavery is being taught. Black history should not be regulated to one month of the year or one unit in history class or simply images of MLK Jr. or Rosa Parks on the walls during Black History Month. All students benefit from learning black history. After all, black history is American history. You cannot tell the US history story without telling of the ongoing struggles for freedom and the cultural creativeness black people have embraced, which has shaped so many things that we see today in society. You see, we are the blueprint. Although we cannot control other people's actions, I believe that if we learn to respect and appreciate other cultures, 
it will be clear to many that culturally appropriating and therefore profiting off another's culture is wrong. We do not want the significance behind our culture to be lost in the ignorance behind someone who sees our culture as cool and takes advantage of it. Using our culture when they see fit. People who love our culture, but not us. If we push for black history to be taught in schools, black kids will be less likely to be put in detentions or expelled because of their hair or forced to cut it as schools become culturally aware. And if we do not call out that person who is culturally appropriating, that person is getting praised while that black woman who lost her job because of her hair is wondering how she's going to feed her family. If we fight for black history, myself or that black child will be able to see themselves in school curriculum. Through this, gaining pride in who we are, gaining pride in loving our skin color, our history, our resilience, our beauty, which I have learned to do. You see, black culture is the blueprint and should be respected. Thank you.